subscribers and those who are just passing by for the first time, um, welcome to my channel. And returning subscribers, thank you for checking in. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what frame of mind you're in this evening, but I'm very conscious that a lot of us, nearly all of us, 100% of us, want our lives to return back to normal. We want what we had two weeks ago or probably two months ago. Many of us are here thinking, you know, if only I had, you know, a job, or if only I had some money or whatever. But we're at a time, we're in challenging times. And so when I deliver my um, videos now, I'm more conscious and more sensitive to what people are going through. I can't be, you know, I don't feel as though, even though I know many of my subscribers look to me for encouragement and inspiration, and I do try to do that. But I'm also conscious that there are a lot of people out there who are struggling and who do need that little extra push. Anyway, um, the news I'm talking about today, it's going to vary. I'm going to start off with Jamaica first, and then I'm going to come back into England. Because what's happening in Jamaica, in Jamaica, there are how many students? 36 Jamaican students stranded in Barbados. Um, Jamaica has closed the airport and is telling the students that they, if they want support, they need to go to the honorary council. They're not bringing them back. Now, I think this is really unfortunate because Barbados hasn't had any deaths. Barbados has less cases than Jamaica. And I was thinking that when you think about Fort Lauderdale, they took on those two ships. They allowed them to dock 1,400 passengers, knowing that two, I think between two and four had died. There was over 100 cases and they still took them in quarantine most of them and whatever they did with the rest but they took them in i don't understand why jamaica cannot like the bahamas did tra um, charter a flight and let her nationals come home i don't understand why not i understand their concerns about the um the virus but these are your people these aren't foreign nationals. These are Jamaicans who did, who were, go, who went to Barbados to improve themselves, to get an education. They're students, and they're being denied entry. And then you have people within the country who are blatantly ignoring social distancing and all that kind of stuff, and yet. You know, the I know they have the police in place, but it's, it's ironic that I'm not telling anybody what to do, but it's ironic that you have people within that could be spreading the virus through their behaviour and lack of understanding of the seriousness of the situation. And then you have people outside of the country who are in Barbados, where there's been no deaths, and they've got less cases than Jamaica, and they're not allowing them to come back in. At least let them come in, quarantine them if you want. Quarantine them for the 14 days, but bring them home. You know, it's really unfortunate, and I'm, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I definitely don't agree with that. I, when you think about other countries bringing home their nationals and they've got higher cases and I understand that Jamaica is trying to conserve you know their energies and their resources I do understand that but it's really really unfortunate there that they're telling um the well maybe maybe where they are is safer maybe Barbados is safer than Jamaica I don't have a clue but in times of crisis, you want to be home. That's all I'm saying about that one. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, the Home Office has closed its doors to the public. Well, that's inevitable. Well, it's not really inevitable. It's actually closed. Yes, yeah, closed its office to the public. So things are still going on behind the scenes. But 
Um, no one can go to the offices. They can't get their biometrics done. So their situation's on hold. Everything has to be done online. There's no appointments until further notice. Um, the submissions unit in Liverpool is closed until further notice. Reporting centres are closed and you should have received a text by now. The biometric section is closed, so any applications submitted are on hold, and any appointments for March and April have been cancelled. So you can imagine there's going to be a massive backup when they get back into the swing of things. Mind you, they're probably able to clear the backlog if they're not seeing new applicants. So that is one thing to the advantage. Well, I'm assuming they'll be able to get through the backlog. Um, pending applications that have been paid for, um, they are supposed to call you and um, let you know when you're, you can get your biometrics, when you can do your biometrics. I'm not quite sure how that is done. Uh, maybe it's done in a socially distancing friendly environment. I'm not quite sure. Um, all visa applications have been extended to the 31st of May. Um, but like I said in a previous video, make sure, you know, the notice has gone out 31st of May, but make sure you apply for renewal. I don't know if they tell you what the time frame is, but, you know, if you can do up to 30 days in advance, apply for your renewal, I would do so. Don't think that just because they've given you an extension, you can sit back and think, oh, yeah, I can stay here for until 31st of May. Great, whoopee, and not do anything about it. You need to get an extension just in case this situation goes beyond the 31st of May. And if you haven't applied for an extension, you're not going to get an extension beyond the 31st of May, I would think. So make sure you it, just pretend that this pandemic isn't happening when it comes to um, filling up documents, fulfilling your responsibility and that kind of stuff. Just make sure you do everything um, properly. And make sure you read all the small print. Make sure you know exactly what is expected of you um, in this situation. All, yeah, like I said, Trump is turning foreign nationals back, putting them on a charter flight. That's with the boat, you know, the boat that they, that landed. Did I say that? Did I say that before? Anyway, if I didn't say it before, yeah, he's just, they're all getting back on a charter plane. And anyone who's not an American national can't come into the country. Um, put an application in online before the visa expires. I've already said that. What else have we got? Yeah, you would think like in times like this, we'd get a council tax reprieve, but oh no. We're not so lucky. And there's your total council tax bill is under £150. You have to pay. It might be a bit less, depending on the circumstances. But if you want street lights and if you want your roads done and you want your bins emptied, you're going to have to pay council tax. So no reprieve on council tax, please. Um, and yes, it started. Um, I think most those people that do the ten months, where you get ten months, you pay over 10 months you pay a year so you pay a little extra and you get two months reprieve in january and in february and march um yeah the the rise i think it's 3.6 percent i'm not sure don't quote me takes effect from um the 6th of april i think so your next bill is going to be a bit more than usual um yeah I think that's it. Oh, what was I going to say? You know, so that is not all. Um, I did want to mention a little bit more about the face mask. You know I'm an advocate for face masks. And to be honest, WHO are looking into it now. I mean, before they were saying, you know, because of if it gets damp, you know, the, the droplets can still filter in and your hands might be dirty when you're taking it off. Or you might have dirty hands when you're putting it on and all that kind of stuff. But now they're saying face masks in conjunction with good hygiene may be the way to go. So that is a good thing. Um, also, you have to have you ever spoken to somebody and when they speak to you, they sp spray? That's another thing. So it's not just people coughing. 
even people laughing, some people who laugh. I heard this woman, she was laughing. Like, <laughs> that's how she was going. And all this stuff is spraying out. I mean, thank God I wasn't within um, spraying distance. But there again, I don't know how far those droplets are spraying, that aerosol spray. I don't know how far it's going. But, you know, it isn't just about coughing and sneezing. Because I'm sure you've spoken to somebody and you have to say, oh, you know, do you have to spray when you speak or spit when you speak? A lot of people have said that. And the same with laughing. So it's got, those masks have got, they cover a multitude of sins. So like I said, you know, hopefully very, very soon they won't see, be seen as um, as something that's going to alarm people because there was a Jamaican woman. I think from Hillingdon Hospital. Don't quote me on Hillingdon Hospital, but in a hospital, an NHS um, staff member, she'd been off with her child who she claims had the virus. So she was returning back to work and she decided she'd done the 14 days. So she decided to come back to work and wear her mask. And they told her, no, she mustn't wear it. And then when she was giving somebody blood, somebody sneezed or did something in her face and she gave up her job. I think in this time, it's not the best time to chuck in your job, love. Yes, I mean, it's a very unhygienic way to work, but they have an appeal process. They have a process that you go through. And when you leave your job, you do not get no support. Because you voluntarily made yourself unemployed. So she can't even go and claim anything from the benefit office. So she's really, I mean, I understand her concerns, but that's what happens when you get emotional and you get frustrated and angry. You don't think. So now she, because she was told she couldn't wear a mask, and as far as she's concerned, she's, she's reported it to the papers because it was in the papers, but they're not going to help you. They're not going to pay your salary. So what she should have done is simply, um, if she's given the person an injection, I mean, you know, just do what you need to do within the confines of what you're doing. I mean, these people are probably not even watching what you're doing. So while you're with clients, you could wear your mask. And then if you want to take it higher, you take it higher and report it and tell them your concerns. But walking out of a job and resigning because of it, I don't think that's a sensible move, not in this time. I mean, NHS is one of, I would think at the moment, I don't know what's going to happen down the line, but at the moment is one of the secure jobs. You know, they're looking for staff. And now you've got a child, you've walked out of your job because somebody sneezed at you. And I understand how concerning me, I'm petrified when somebody comes near me. I mean, my daughter said to me today, uh, Mum, you know, is there anything you need? And, want? and I just didn't want to have to have that situation where she is going to have to put something outside my door and I can't get open the door and I can't hug her like I normally do. I didn't want to be placed in that situation. So I said, no, darling, it's OK. But my point is, is that, you know, if you are among you know, I'm protecting her, I'm protecting myself. But when you're a nurse or in that kind of environment and you know, you know that NHS staff are dying through catching it from patients, it's terrifying. So maybe, maybe she feels her life is she's got more peace of mind walking out on the job. But all I'm saying, that I'm not telling her to sell her soul to the devil. But what I am saying is that, you know, she could have, you know, even if she she's walked out now, but I don't know if she contracts something after she's walked out, whether she'll still be liable. But, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's a very, very, I mean, people working with the NHS and having to um, deal with people who've got contagious diseases and they don't have the correct protective equipment. I mean, she actually bought the mask herself and they would not allow her to use it which is quite unfortunate. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know below. Do you think she should have um, walked out or do you think she should have just 
worn the mask anyway, you know, more or less behind their backs while she's dealing with the patients. What do you think? I'd be interested to know because sometimes I might not be seeing the bigger picture. And, you know, I, I, I'm a type of person. I like to think of my security. So me, I think if it was me, I'm more, more likely to think up yours, love. Wait till her back's turned and put on my mask. That's what I would like you to do, and especially if I'm dealing with clients. And these these people who tell you not to wear your mask, they're not around you 24-7. So I would have asked um, the patient if it was, if he felt offended or alarmed. And apparently she did ask the patient, and the patient wasn't alarmed. In fact, the patient said he felt better that she had the mask on. So I would have just used my own initiative. I would have just used my own initiative because I do know that the other day I was told to remove the mask. I had a mask and I only had it under this, you know, so I could pull it up if I needed it. But I was told I had to take it off because it would alarm other people. And I was peed off. And I'm not even engaging with um, with with um, patients who might have the virus. So, but for me, it's about anybody coming in close contact with me. I don't want to see anybody. You know what I mean? Just keep your distance, love. Just keep your distance. But, um, yeah, and sometimes you could be paranoid. Sometimes you can be overreacting. But in this time, you just do not know what's going on. And, yes, we have different theories and, but we do not know what the truth is. We do not know if it's 5G. We do not know. We know the coronavirus exists and we know it's getting out of hand, but that's all we know. So I'm not taking any risks when I'm going out. I'm wearing my mask. And if I see someone coming, I'm crossing the street. Or I'm turning my back or I'm making sure I'm more than um, two metres away. The other day, the other day, my boss, my boss, well, not my boss, but one of the um, one of the leads came into the little office. I've come up, I've come up, I've commandeered an office, and um, I feel great in there because I'm in there by myself. So somebody came in, and I knew she had um, she had been she'd been off with a cold. I don't know what kind of cold it was, but she had been off with a cold. So um, she said she was going to bring something in. No, she wanted me to do something for her. So I did what I was supposed to do. And I put it on the other side of a divider. And I sent an email and said, you know, I'm conscious that you haven't been well over the last couple of weeks. So the document is on the other side of the divider. More or less saying, don't come near me, love. But, you know, yes, it might seem a bit extreme, but we have to do what's best for us. We have to do what we, how we feel comfortable. And some people are fine. Some people feel comfortable with that anymore. Some people aren't even bothered. But I think as you get older, you get a bit more cautious. And I think you're more likely to take things a bit more seriously. So I think that is all. As usual, I wrap it on regardless. And I hope um, you enjoyed um, my roundup, which wasn't really a roundup, but it was a bit of a roundup. And I hope to see you tomorrow if there's anything worth talking about. Otherwise, if not, have a wonderful weekend and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.